President Trump says the State of the Union will go on its plan on Tuesday. And prospects right now appear grim, uh, but the Senate is set to vote with respect to the government shutdown. This time tomorrow, they'll have the vote. There's competing plans, both to reopen the government. This is the shutdown has reached day 33. Uh, one plan includes more money for the border wall, and the other one does not. This, as a new poll shows, the American people are ready for a compromise. Joining me now is the chairman of the Civic Forum PAC, Fort O'Connell, uh, columnist for The Hill, Kristen Tate, and Democratic strategist Kevin Wall. And Kristen, let me start with you. Uh, by the way, this letter, these competing letters, just so the audience knows, because many people may not be aware of this, President Trump just moments ago sent Nancy Pelosi a letter. Uh, and at the end, it concludes, I look forward to seeing you on the evening of January 29th in the chamber of the House of Representatives. All right, Kristen. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know if that's a tell for we'll have a deal by then, or I'm going to give this speech one way or the other. He's going to give the speech one way or another. I do not think we're going to have a deal by then and suspect that this shutdown is going to go on for quite some time, Charles. Trump won't agree to any deal that doesn't fund his wall. Democrats won't agree to any deal that does fund his wall. For Trump, this is about keeping a campaign promise. To Democrats, this is about... Politic politics, dirty politics. The fundamental issue here is not the $5.6 billion in funding for the wall. I mean, the federal government spends more than that every single day. We spend $7.2 million a minute to keep the government open. If anything, though, Charles, I hope we can walk away from this government shutdown with the understanding that the federal government is just way too big, way too bloated, and should be downsized significantly. I mean, look at the TSA. It's yeah. a laughable failure. It should be privatized. The private sector is more effective because there's accountability in the private yeah, sector. Well, well, Federal workers are 45 times less likely to get fired and receive 17 percent more in pay than their private sector counterparts. Although right now, though, uh, Kevin, we are hearing about these food pantries and we know people have missed one check. They'll soon miss two. Uh, and, and despite the fact that maybe, you know, if they prepare next time, maybe privatization and those things would mitigate this sort of a problem. But for right now, uh, it appears to be a sort of a public relations battle. Who? Which side gets the most uh, most damage? And you got to wonder if that's really the right way to approach this. To Kristen's point, many Democrats voted for this sort of security that they're now calling immoral. How do they pull that one off? Yeah, Charles, you know, and, and you're rightly so. You know, on, on Friday, uh, federal employees, 800,000 uh, Americans are set to miss their second paycheck. Uh, I disagree a little bit with uh, Kristen's assessment of all federal uh, workers. Uh, you know, half my family served in the Coast Guard. These are brave men and women uh, that are going without pay. The commandant of the uh, Coast Guard today said that it's so disgusting uh, and beneath Americans that uh, the brave uh, members of the Coast Guard are having to go to a food pantry. But this war of attrition uh, has, uh, you know, uh, escalated to the point where it's really hurting uh, everyday Americans. You but know, let me when ask elephants you this, though, fight, Kevin, Kevin, when let elephants let me, fight, I, the grass ask, loses. One second, guys. Kevin, let me ask you, because the so-called Schumer shutdown was relatively short-lived, in part because the polling numbers were going against the Democrats. I mean, yeah. would, it would it take the polling numbers to go against Nancy Pelosi before we could get a deal? No, I think, well, I, you know, you, uh, Charles, that's a great point. The polling numbers are going against this president. Seventy percent of Americans at a, a poll uh, this morning from CBS News say they want the government reopened without this border funding. So the polling pressure is on this president to do the right thing, as Democrats did in the last shutdown fight. It's Ke up to the Kevin, president I, I, to come to the table. All right, Ford. I, look, Democrats say over and over they want to reopen the government. We're going to find out on Thursday just how serious they are. I think what gets lost in the shutdown coverage is that Nancy Pelosi is a hot hostage to her new caucus led by Ocasio-Cortez, okay? And essentially, she can't be seen working with President Trump on something that is a very a vital national security and a campaign promise. This logjam has to be broken by McConnell and the Senate. The question is going to be what items it's going to take to break that logjam. All I can say that McConnell has to make sure he does, and whatever deal he strikes, is get enforcement before legalization. Because at the end of the day, if we don't get enforcement, then we're never going to get illegal immigration under control. You know, Kristen, what worries me is that we saw over the weekend uh, the, what some are calling the Trump derangement syndrome, where, you know, if, as long as it's opposition to President Trump, even whether it's, whether it's right or wrong, it's OK. Mm -hmm. And this feels to me that it will embolden Nancy Pelosi and Democrats, uh, you know, to sort of st stay with Kevin saying, hey, as long as public relations aren't against us and it's unlikely it ever will be against him with the media behind him, then those keep the situation going while also saying that they care for 800,000 people who are Americans not getting paid. 
Yep, this is all about optics. Trump's proposal is not going to go anywhere on Thursday, but Mitch McConnell's really smart to put this up for a vote because if the Democrats don't even consider the proposals, if they're not even willing to come to the table, it proves that they really are prioritizing politics over running government smoothly and uh, over border security and DACA. Their priorities will be made very clear. But I also want to point out that Trump cannot cave on his signature campaign campaign promise. There are whispers now that Jared Kushner and other Republicans are pressuring Trump to offer green cards to DACA recipients in exchange for the $5.6 billion. That would be a huge mistake for the president. It would be seen as so caving what does President uh, Trump on do his then, promise Kristen? What does by he do? his, his just, supporters. I mean, he's, he's made this compromise. It was a really good deal. Uh, and uh, do they just, it's a war of attrition. It's a war of personalities. Where does, where does President Trump, or does he make the next move? Does he stand firm where he is now and wait for Nancy Pelosi. He's got to stand firm and put the ball in the court of the Democrats. If he offers amnesty for just $5.6 billion, that's going to look bad because the last time amnesty was on the table, he was asking for $25 billion plus other rollbacks to immigration. So to now offer amnesty in exchange for just $5.6 billion would really turn off his base and demobilize them. Kevin, we know Nancy Pelosi is not necessarily in the same predicament as President Trump with respect to a promise. By the way, a promise that elevated President Trump to the White House. Uh, uh, and some political experts are saying, you know, it's OK for her to take a stand. But at some point, she must understand that this is, a, to, to, this is a central issue that he asked the American public if they cared about at the most important time. And that's when we went to the ballot box in November of 2016. And he won. Uh, does yeah. Nancy Pelosi come back with anything? Yeah, Charles, I mean, the original promise, if, if you go back to those uh, campaign rallies, was that Mexico was going to pay for it. The Republicans had two years of total control of the entire government and failed well, to solve Well, they never had this. Yeah, Kevin. votes in the Senate, but go ahead. So, well, Kevin, they failed Kevin, to propose any Nancy, kind of meaningful where? increase in border security. The, the Democrats have passed a bipartisan uh, bill. As Ford said, there's going to be two proposals on the Senate floor tomorrow uh, for consideration. I'm hopeful that we can reopen the government with a bipartisan bill that got Republican support in the House. What about President Trump's reform. compromise, Kevin? It's not bipartisan. Uh, it's, 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 it, it, it was passed by Republican votes, Charles. No, no, this Republicans on the President House Trump voted for a weekend. bill that's before the Senate what, tomorrow. What part of the, uh, President Trump's bill is, is, is compromise, rather, isn't bipartisan? Well, there's there's poison pills that the the White House has agreed that they put into the legislation tomorrow, making it not palatable, uh, acceptable to Democrats in the Senate. That is wrong. That's not negotiating in good faith. You have a bipartisan bill from the House that's voted on tomorrow on the floor of the Senate. Kevin, Kevin, Democrats say that they want DACA and TPS. That is exactly what President Trump is putting forward. And remember what the president's number one job is. But a three-year agreement is not the the solution Hold on. This whole argument is absolutely ridiculous. Where was Nancy Pelosi calling the wall tomorrow when when Barack Obama put up 138 miles of wall? We have 650 plus miles of wall. Steny Hoyer said walls work in some places. But the question is, why is it that you don't want to do this? Obviously, it is about politics. The question is that Republicans have to reframe this argument, not only make it about security, but make it about the fact that Democrats really don't want to open the government, and they're more concerned about playing politics with Trump and Ford, not about let the me safety ask you of the that, On that, on that you know point, that's not Ford, true. hold on one second. Point, uh, Ford, on that point, can, the Dem- can Republicans ever truly uh, control the, the message in this sort of media environment, though? Absolutely, they can, but they have to show that they're out there compromising. And one of the ways that they're going to do is to make sure that the Democrats are going to sit on their hand. If this goes on long enough, then President Trump will have the public opinion to go with a national emergency. Until then, he has to make sure he works it through the legislative process, because using an executive order is something the Democrats could eventually overturn should they retake power. Kristen, I'll give you the last word. It feels like uh, Nancy Pelosi, President Trump, going for the Bill Belichick Award here, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I, yeah, that's uh, a great and, reference, and, Charles. And, and can, can, can they bring others into this negotiation process to get it moving? I don't see any progress anytime soon. This is about the Democrats not wanting to appear like they are helping Trump get his wall. They don't care about security, border security. They couldn't care less about the DACA recipients. This is about politics, political strategy. So I don't know how this is going to end, but Trump would be smart to not cave on his signature campaign promise. Thank you very much. Love the intelligence and the passion. Ford, Kristen, and Kevin, thank you all very much. Right now, uh, while uh, off the session,